there are some pretty big limitations to the these 556 223 caliber there are also some really wide open uses for it there's a lot of great uses for it it's very versatile your uh, full metal jacket and your soft point um, the main thing you got to consider here just the fact that it's a small caliber if you're trying to bring down a hog or a deer this is a small caliber you want to make a good shot take your time wait for a good shot to present itself don't force a bad shot the only good shot you should ever take on a medium to larger sized animal with a 223 is a completely broadside this way lung shot right into the ribs not the shoulder area behind the shoulder blade into the ribs in the lungs don't go for a heart shot don't do the classic 30 out six move of breaking the shoulder don't go for that those these don't do well on heavy bones and now for your distance your effective distance really it's limited to about 150 yards kind of on the farthest end if you back up to about 100 yards you can get pretty darn good effectiveness even out of the 16 inch barrels like mine here my AR is a shorty it's got a 16 inch heavy barrel and it comes out slower it's a shorter barrel it comes out slower first up is the FNJ second will be my expanding point All right, FMJ versus the expanding point. I saw a difference there. Did you? So you know about how those bullets will operate in a small target, something shallower, but how about something a little thicker and more dense, you know, something more like a larger game animal? I've got my hams to simulate that damage in tough tissue and bone. I'm gonna fire the soft point to the left and the full metal jacket to the right. Starting with the hand that I shot with the FNJ, poor hand. Now the bullet went in right here. I'm going to follow the bullet trip path with my knife here, right through this bone. You can see it came in here and it tore through that knee joint, right through the knee joint, which is a good two and a half inches thick of solid bone right there. On the back side of this bone, kind of the back three quarters, it started to, that's where it started to really tumble and fragment and blow apart. The complete wound channel is pretty much, it's about this big, which is about, about, how big? Let's measure it, dude. I got a measure here. Three and a half inches deep, four and a half inches wide. After it went through the bone and everything, we had 11, 11 and a half inches of penetration in here, which does surprise me. At least one chunk made it almost all the way through the whole ham. Let's look at this ham that I shot with the soft point. Wow, there's a lot more damage in the beginning, that's for sure. That whole knee bone is basically gone. I'm looking at this thing here, I mean, I've got some fragments here and there. Yeah, that whole knee bone is just gone. There, there's this literally a hole larger than a softball missing in the middle of this ham where the knee joint was. After watching those video clips, you can see that there's some pretty big differences in the way these cartridges perform. Now the soft point, at these faster speeds, that soft point just kind of blows up and that's okay. For a medium sized, medium game animal, you know, something like your pronghorn antelopes, up to some of the smaller deer, that's totally fine. It's not going to get a whole lot of penetration generally. That's fine. It's complete massive jacket failure, explosive fragmentation when you're talking around 3,000 feet per second. You get under that and you're gonna get less and less fragmentation, you're gonna get more weight retention and penetration, but overall less wounding now because the bullet's going slower. So like I said, you know, 100, 150 yards max, try to keep it under 100 yards. As shown in my test here, the FMJ does better shooting through bones than the expanding soft point. That expanding soft point kind of blew blew up almost backwards a little bit in that wound too on the hams. 
whereas the FMJ went completely through the entire knee joint on that ham, which is, you know, that thick a bone. That's a lot. Once it went through the knee joint, it went about another half inch, and then it did its complete fall apart explosion fragmentation. And that's what we're looking for. That bullet, that bullet, the FMJ, if I hit the shoulder of a deer, it'll probably go through it and it'll blow up one lung, but probably not both. If I go a little further back from the shoulders, I don't really go through that shoulder joint, maybe just nick the shoulder blade, I'll go through both lungs and destroy both lungs fairly well. Might, might not get a pass through. On a big deer, probably won't. On a small deer, I just might. Now there's the differences here between the the uh, soft point and the FMJ, more specifically the M193 in the 5.56223. Your stuff like um, Wolf Ammo, Barnall, um, Tula Ammo, Tula Mo, that stuff isn't really going to function at all like the military or any of the other NATO rounds really, but specifically the M193 US military cartridge. The Russian steel cased ammo, they have a much harder and thicker jacket on the bullet and it holds it together better. It doesn't stay more stable. It'll tumble a little but you don't get fragmentation which is the majority of the wounding even with a tumbling bullet. So the US made bullets are the best for the full metal jacket. US made 55 grains. If it's, if it's labeled as an M193, that's great ammo. Really it is as long as you're taking just a long shot. The soft point is also great ammo as long as you're taking just a long shot. All in all, take a long shot close up and it'll work. And maybe a neck shot too, that would probably do as well. Well, that's what I got for you today. Thanks for watching Michigan Sharpshooters and my uh, digression of the debacle between these two cartridges for hunting rounds. Don't forget to like the video and look around for more cool information, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye now.